I just try to try to run the play that's called and, and try to execute it to the best of our ability. And um, you know, there's a couple plays obviously that we we want back. Welcome back into the film room. I'm your host Eric Turner, and in today's Cover One Film Room feature, we're going to break down the Ken Dorsey offense and how that efficient offense limits Josh Allen. I know it was a frustrating 24 to 18 loss to the Bengals, and there are a lot of questions, and most of those questions lie on the offensive side of the ball. I get it. I'm frustrated as well. And I feel like the debate between analytics and the eye test or film still wages on. And I think this is another one of those games where you still have questions on that and you don't quite trust in the analytics and what they're telling you. Regardless of what stats you look at, whether they're raw stats, volume stats, advanced metrics, the Bills are probably top five in all of them, maybe even top 10 in all of those categories. But when you turn on the film and you start to look at the offense, the structure, the reads, the progressions, and the flow of it, something just feels off. And you're not wrong. I do think on paper, whether you're looking at metrics or the playbook itself, Ken Dorsey calls a really efficient offense. He has Josh Allen playing very efficiently. But in many ways, that efficiency and the way it's structured within the offense and the offensive playbook, it limits Josh Allen in many ways. And it forces him to continually stay on the rail, stay within structure. And there's nothing built on top of these base concepts. I'm going to show you that in the film room today. I'm going to show you some of their base concepts, some of their go-to plays and concepts to keep the offense and Josh Allen efficient and how he doesn't really build anything on top of it to open up those explosives. So after you show a play several times, what's built on top of that? Yes, we want him to be efficient, but this is the NFL. You can't expect 10 to 12 play drives consistently. You gotta have some explosives. You gotta have some easy plays that you built up and schemed to push the ball down the field and score quickly. And by the end of this video, I hope you understand what they're trying to do on offense from an efficiency standpoint, but also how it limits Josh Allen in many ways. So without further ado, let's jump into the film. All right, let's set this breakdown up. So the next series of plays are the Bills' go-to concepts versus two high coverages. So anytime a cover two look is there, a Tampa two, a quarters coverage, a cover six look, the Bills are going to attack it with this beater concept. It's a very good two high safety beater concept. To the bottom of the screen, speed out by Gabe Davis. Shakir in the slot is running a whip route to the middle of the field. So he makes it look like an out route, kind of like you see the route from Kincaid up top, but then he bends it back inside. He pivots back inside to the middle of the field. Kincaid gets the ball here in the slot to the top of the screen. He is running an option route. More times than not, he's reading the leverage of that inside linebacker, the safety, but more importantly, that corner who is an off and soft coverage on Sherfield. Sherfield is going deep. This is that Beasley Davis special from years ago where Sherfield's going deep. Now, if that corner squats on the route by Kincaid, boom, over the top touchdown to Sherfield on this play, like we saw many times between Beasley and Davis. Very good read by Kincaid. Slow plays it. He sees heavy inside leverage from the linebacker. Safety is off and soft. He peeks at the outside corner. He's in really soft coverage. He takes the out route and they move the chains. So a very efficient play. If you get a too high safety look, guess what? we have a two high safety beater concept to run inside the red zone. So on the very next play, the Bills score a touchdown, and the next drive, the fourth play of that next drive, Bengals show a two high safety look. Josh pump fakes to the slot, to Diggs, and then throws it deep to Davis, but it's intercepted. Bengals play a Tampa two look with a three-man rush, so they drop eight in the coverage. The Bills are in their two-by-two -two formation. They basically run mirrored concepts, so... Shakir and Kincaid to the bottom and Diggs in the slot and Davis to the top of the screen. Slot guys are running out routes or hooks. Outside guys are running go routes. Josh should probably just take the profit there and throw it to Diggs on that out route, on that hook route. Instead, he's trying to bait the corner to drive or trap that route by Diggs, much like you saw in the last play. But this corner is obviously lower and can make a play on the ball on Diggs. So he tries pump faking him and getting him to bite on it and then throwing it up and over to Davis, which, as I said on the last play, this is a Cole Beasley, Gabe Davis special. It's one that Josh has thrown multiple touchdowns to Davis in that honey hole for big plays. Well, on this one, he does not throw it properly, and it gets intercepted. So you can see the efficient routes and plays are there, but Josh wants to push the ball down the field a little bit. Did he have to at this moment? No. Again, there are multiple options to the top of the screen, and there are options to the bottom of the screen. As I said, these are efficient routes and plays, especially against these two high coverage looks. 
Josh wanted to attack to the top of the screen. I'm sure he has the option to work both sides of the field. He works to the top. He doesn't throw it to Diggs like he did to Kincaid on the last one. He goes deep to Davis, and that underthrown ball gets intercepted by the Bengals. All right, let's fast forward to the end of the first half. 50 seconds left in the first half. The Bills are driving. This is a first and 10 situation. Two by two formation. Four yard throw to Kincaid in the slot to the top of the screen. It's the same play. Davis running the speed out, whip route to the middle of the field by Shakir. Kincaid running that option route, but he converts it to an out route or a hook because of the heavy inside leverage of the linebacker. Off coverage by the corner, deep half safety, too high safety look. Easy four yards, you take it and move on. Kincaid gets banged up on this play on the tackle by the DB. There's no flag thrown on this, but it's an efficient play. It's a good, efficient play to have, especially if you're talking two-minute situations and no huddle. It's very efficient. You're going to gain some yards, but you're not able to push the ball down the field. It's all within structure. Now, fast forward to the fourth quarter. 13-25 left in the game. First and 10 situation. 11-yard game by Kincaid from this 2-by-2 two two set, from this option route. But on this play, he converts that option route to an in-breaking route, so just an in or under route on Pratt. But then at the end of it, Pratt punches the ball out and the Bengals recover. A big, big swing in this game. On the snap, you have the corner playing off coverage, but watch Pratt fly outside and try to close that cushion. He's seen this out route. He wants to close that cushion and be able to make a play on the ball as Kincaid runs that out route. But Kincaid runs a filthy route to the middle of the field, just like we saw in the preseason against the Steelers. Gets that inside win catches the ball, but the safety comes down, takes his legs out, and while Kincaid is in midair, Pratt punches the ball out. This is why this play is great to have in the playbook. I wouldn't want them running it as often as they have, but when the defense starts reacting to that out route, now you have a pivot, a natural pivot, though. This is a natural read by Kincaid, a leverage read, understanding that Pratt is going to fly out wide to deter that throw on the out route so he breaks it inside this time and he's able to get yards up the field but you got to secure the ball this was a huge swing in this game on to the next concept it's one we've broken down many times in the film room and kind of a combination as you'll see between the last concept and this in-breaking concept more of a high low over the middle of the field versus these two high safety coverages so number one wide receiver is digs to the top of the screen he's running an under route sometimes it's break inside then stop as that underneath defender flashes to the underneath area the number two is the tight end here Dalton Kincaid he's running an in route but it's further down the field he's breaking to the middle of the field so the progression to the top of the screen is if Diggs is open as you see here he gets the ball he's the first read he's the primary he gets the ball if Diggs gets taken away by the corner and that linebacker number two is Kincaid and then Josh is forced to essentially work all the way across the field to the bottom of the screen you're going to see that out route by the slot receiver shakir and then the go route by davis and a check down on the back end to cook and this is what i mean when i talk about dorsey's offense being sort of disjointed you got your coverage beater to the top of the screen those two in breaking routes at different levels attacking the middle of the field and if that's not there if that's taken away for any reason josh has to either just dump it down the cook or work all the way across the field to the out route to the go route that's a lot to ask of josh allen and any quarterback and that's why when you hear me say that when the coverage beater is kind of taken away or it's not there or josh just skips it for whatever reason there's nothing coming into his line of sight on a play like this so Diggs is open he's the first read he gets the ball here easy pitch and catch but it's only a four yard game but on paper and on the field it's efficient it's these types of plays and concepts that you hear the coordinator or the quarterback talk about we're just going to run our offense. We need to just run our offense and let everything come to them. It's a little different than the way Dable attacked things. Dable was more on the offensive. Every single week, you had a different game plan from a run and pass perspective. Dorsey has these concepts with some option routes built in, some leverage reads built in, where the quarterback and the receivers on the field do a lot of the heavy lifting. There's not a lot of scheming going on. There's a lot of okay, they're going to play this coverage on this down-in situation. We're going to attack it with this concept 
And again, there's some things built in there to the routes, whether they're option routes, leverage reads, things like that for the guys on the field. But again, a lot of the heavy lifting happens by the guys on the field. So on the last play, Diggs was a primary. He was open. They gave it to him. On this play, it's a little different. Allen moves past Diggs because you see the safety number 33, Scott, buzz out to the flats. You see the edge defender pop out into the underneath area as the Bengals rotate into a different looking cover two. And so Diggs is taken away. Josh goes to number two. That's Kincaid on the in-breaking route. You see him slow down in that window behind the dropping edge player and in front of the Mike linebacker. And it's a nice gain. A simple read from pre to post snap and an easy pitch and catch from Josh Allen to Don Kincaid. So later in the game, two by two set, two high safety look. Josh, for some reason, starts to the bottom of the screen where Diggs and Kincaid are running what looks like their toss concept. A stop route by Diggs, a seam route typically by the slot guy, Kincaid. But for some reason, he breaks it inside here with that safety capping him. To the top of the screen, same thing. Slot receiver, deep in-breaking route. Number one wide receiver, Gabe Davis, running that under route. Josh starts his eyes on the left side here. He doesn't like what he sees there. Maybe he realized he started on the wrong side of the field or just didn't like Pratt underneath the route by Kincaid. And he checks it down. Not a big deal. First down play, get a few yards, get an efficient play, right? But as you can see, is the defense actually threatened? So after that four yard gain to Cook on the check down, the Bills face a third and six situation and Josh Allen throws a pass to Diggs, it goes incomplete. But look at the route concept. Davis to the top of the screen, running the go route. Shakira in the slot, running the out route. Kincaid in the slot to the bottom, running the deep in breaking route. And Diggs running the under route. Again, they're two high coverage beater route combinations. But the Bengals are in a single high man coverage play. So who's doing most of the lifting on this play? Where is Josh supposed to go on this play? Is there a concept or purpose behind this route combination, any of these route combinations, to get someone open versus man coverage? Absolutely not. So you're expecting Josh Allen and Diggs to play this perfectly for this pass to be perfectly placed over the middle on this in-breaking route. And it's not. Diggs gets disrupted at the line of scrimmage. Could a flag have been thrown? Absolutely, but the rest were terrible altogether. But once again, where's the strategy? Where's the scheming? How are you getting your guys open? Are you just running coverage beaters? Are you scheming guys open? Because on this play, in tight man coverage and third and six, the Bills don't have a good strategy or play call. And that's on Dorsey. All right, fast forward to the fourth quarter. 6.44 left in the game. A second and one situation. Bills are in the shotgun. No huddle. Two by two formation. So what do you see on defense? A single high safety look. You don't exactly know whether they're in man or zone yet. That you have to determine post-snap. But you can see most of the defenders are in off coverage. Post-snap, Josh starts to the top of the screen. Whether that's right or wrong, I can't tell you. But typically, when they run two high safety looks and they run this concept, that's where they start with the reads. And so Josh decides to start up there. They take away Diggs, the primary read. Corner drives on it. Pratt, the inside linebacker, buzzes out to the flats. And they're taking Diggs away in this situation. So Josh should move on to the number two. And that is Kincaid over the middle. And if Josh throws it in rhythm, in stride, and places it nicely for Kincaid, he probably has a big play after the catch. But for some reason, and I don't know if it's because Josh realized he started to the wrong side of the field based on the single high safety look, he goes all the way across the field. So he bypasses Kincaid, looks for Shakir. It's not really open. He steps up into the pocket into pressure and ends up having to throw it away. So this is on Josh. The play was there for Kincaid. He started to the top of the screen, work through your progressions, and let your eyes take you to your open receiver. He's got to hit Kincaid. And if he hits Kincaid, this is a big play down the field. Everything about this offense this year seems bottled up and difficult to execute. Even when they add a layer to a concept, it doesn't look right. It doesn't execute. It doesn't unfold properly. Like you see here, the Bills run what looks like is going to be their mesh concept. Diggs and Davis appear like they're going to be crossing over the middle, but then they pivot back out to the boundary and Kincaid sitting there in the middle of the field on that sit route, hoping to be open. But everything in the middle is congested. Logan Wilson sitting there waiting 
for Josh to throw that so he could pick it off. There's no one open here. So even when they do add layers to some of their concepts and plays, it doesn't go smoothly. And you can see on this play, Josh gets sacked. Even some of the big plays from yesterday were just tough to watch. Josh initially looks at Gabe Davis at the bottom of the screen. He's running a deep curl route, but that's taken away by the safety in the corner. Underneath, Kincaid's taken away. But then look at the three receivers to the top of the screen. Look at their spacing. What routes are they running? Diggs looks like maybe he's supposed to run like a wheel up the sideline, but it's capped and taken away. Shakir, same route as Davis, hooks it up near the numbers. Thank goodness he and Josh are on the same page. Shakir moves to the middle of the field, becomes QB friendly, and Josh is able to hit him with a nice sidearm throw. But this is, again, Josh playing above the play call and the scheme. This is not a play that Dorsey drew up to get someone open. Remember that first third down conversion, how smooth it was on the snap? Josh eliminates Davis on the corner route, Kincaid to the flats, so that smash concept is eliminated. So he moves on to number three in the progression. Stefan Diggs coming across the field, over the middle of the field, he finds him, and boom, they move the chains. Nice and smooth play early on in the game. Fast forward to later in the game, third down situation. Watch the top of the screen, Diggs and Kincaid. They trip over each other. Josh has to move on to his number three. That's Davis coming across the middle. That's taken away from Logan Wilson. Shakir is taken away on the deep over route. Cook is taken away on the in-breaking route. So all of the weapons in this play are taken away. Thankfully, Josh is able to get out of the pocket, extend the play, and find Kincaid for the first down. But once again, the little details in this offense go missing in some of the most inopportune moments. You want to call it luck? Fine. I don't. The devil's in the details, and too often the details in this offense are lost, and it happens in some critical situations, and sometimes it's Josh Allen's fault, sometimes it's Dorsey's fault. On this play, and in most of the plays against the Bengals, the blame should be placed at the doorstep of Ken Dorsey, the offensive coordinator. I've seen too many instances over the last couple of weeks, and specifically even more so in the Bengals game, that the offense appeared to lack direction. Empty set in the red zone here, what does Josh do? On 39, just throws it deep to Gabe Davis. Now, there should have been a flag for a face mask on this play. But look at the route concepts versus man coverage here in the red zone. Tell me, what are they trying to do? Just get the ball to Diggs? Well, the Bengals on third and long, they bracket him and man up across the board. What's the purpose behind this play? If they take Diggs away, what's the go-to? What are you building on top of that? If they're doubling Diggs, what are you doing to build on top of that to get someone open. A nine route, that's it? It's gotta be frustrating the players on the field to see the lack of creativity week in and week out from Ken Dorsey on offense. Too much of the lifting is done by the players on the field and not by the X's and O's drawn up by their coordinator. And let's not forget, Josh Allen does have some blame here, especially in this game against the Bengals. He missed some throws. He didn't have to throw deep here to Hardy. He could have easily taken the crossing route by Gabe Davis in the intermediate area. That's open. All he has to do is throw it to his spot and Gabe's gonna run to it. So Josh does deserve some blame. He missed some open receivers. He missed some passing windows. I just think a lot of the blame goes to Dorsey. He's in charge of this offense. He's in charge of this quarterback. He's worked every day with this quarterback for several years now. He should be in tune to what he's good at and what he's not good at. Sure, they're an efficient offense. When you look at the film, when you look at the stats, they're very efficient, but that in many ways has capped this offense, has limited Josh Allen, one of the best playmakers in the NFL. Those coverage beater concepts, their base offense, it works. It works on paper, it works on film. But aside from those coverage beaters, what is Ken Dorsey doing to layer or build upon those so that when defenses recognize those coverage beater concepts, they have a counter down the field to get those explosive plays? We haven't seen any of that. We haven't seen the sequencing and layers to plays that you see from some of the best coordinators in the NFL. So until we see that on a consistent basis, the offense, specifically Josh Allen, he's going to be limited. He's going to be capped because Dorsey's going to keep calling these plays that are efficient, that are going to beat the coverage. But defenses nowadays will give that to the offense, force the offense to sustain 10 and 12 play drives. Even if they do score, that is shortening the game. This Bills offense misses those explosive plays and they need to start getting them by their coordinator scheming them up, building out plays on some of their base concepts 
that can push the ball down the field and get chunk plays. Once again, thank you for joining me in the film room. I am Eric Turner, owner of Cover One, host of the film room every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Do me a favor, smash that like button, leave me a comment on your thoughts about this breakdown and the game against the Bengals. Until our next breakdown, go Bills.